Good evening, everyone. Here, Imran Abbas. Uh, again, we are live uh, today. I am live uh, from Dubai, and uh, Professor Kazama from uh, Japan. It is great honor for me to interview such a prestigious figure. So, as you all know better than me, Professor is uh, uh, a well-known bariatric surgeon, and his participation in bariatric surgery at the globe, we all know about this. And really, it was great honor for me. As all you know, we have started this series of safe sleep gastrectomy since July 2021. We have started this series with Patrick Noel, and then every week we had such a legend. We had such a expert of sleep gastrectomy. Still, sleep gastrectomy is the most common bariatric surgery at the globe. So then need to do, because again, we hear some complications, some issues of uh, sleep gastrectomy. So this was the time to know tips and tricks and how can we do this uh, sleep gastrectomy, then we'll face less complication. Sir, I will not take your time and really appreciateable. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Imran. It's clearly my pleasure and honor to participate in this uh, very valuable interviews. Sir, so much thanks, sir, because as you know, uh, in this series, interview series, we have some repeated question. I know well, but uh, overall, because we have a lot of viewers, and again, this uh, we are now live on Facebook group, Global Laparoscopy. And definitely we will have thousands of viewers all over the world. Uh, so sir, your brief introduction. Thank you. I'm Dr. Kazunori Kasama from Tokyo, Japan. I'm the immediate past president of ISO Asian Pacific chapter. Actually, we have the virtual meeting a few weeks ago, and then I passed my presidency to new president CC1 from China. And I also play a role on the past president of Asian Pacific Bariatric Metabolic Surgery Society. And also I'm the executive board of Japan Society of Endoscopic Surgery. Japan Society of Endoscopic Surgery has more than 15,000 patients, uh, 15,000 members, which is one of the most, I mean, the biggest the laparoscopic society in the world. So that I play a role of the chair of international committee of JSIS. So that I also play a role of the executive board of IFSIS, International Federation of Society of Endoscopic Surgery. Sir, excellent. So this is, uh, so in my opinion, infinite. And this is infinity, really, and also great honor to interview such a personality. Sir, we also want to know, I, I, I would like to know about your journey of bariatric surgery. OK. So actually, I started my first laparoscopic bariatric surgery was uh, 2002, so that I started to prepare the the bariatric surgery from 2001. So that means uh, almost 20 years of experience in Japan. Of course, my first laparoscopic bariatric surgery was Luema gastric bypass. And that was the first laparoscopic bariatric surgery in Japan. And uh, after that, I started uh, sleeve gastrectomy in the year of 2005. And then, I developed the sleep plus procedure, which is called sleep DJB. And the, the, at the year of 2007. And uh, actually that uh, I have done uh, around 1,800 cases in Japan, which occupied more than one third of all bariatric practice in Japan. Sir, excellent, excellent. So this is a, a 
again so your journey of bariatric surgery so regarding sir sleeve gastrectomy as you have mentioned now about 16 years you are performing sleeve gastrectomy in 2021 which percentage of your bariatric surgery belongs to sleeve gastrectomy so actually all of my including all of my experience the sleeve gastrectomy occupies around uh, 65% But recently, I mean, in this year, sleep gastrectomy is more more than ninety percent. Wow! This is a, yeah. This is some regulation in Japan. As you know, that uh, Japan have a national insurance coverage system, and in Japan, only sleep gastrectomy is covered by national insurance. So that if patient want to have other surgery like a bypass. They have to pay by themselves, so that the cost of surgery is quite different among procedures. So that recently, almost ninety percent of my practice is sleeve gastrectomy. Sir, you are as you have mentioned, you are pioneer of bariatric surgery in Japan. So why insurance cover only sleeve gastrectomy? So the first concern they have about the gastric bypass was a remnant stomach. Oh, little malignancy. Yes. Yeah, in Japan. That's right. It's in Japan. We have a many gastric cancer. Yeah. So that uh, impossible to screening the remnant stomach yeah. after Lou and Y gastric bypass yeah. is a uh, make some problem in Japan. So that um, the I mean the government. Policy cannot uh, approve gastric bypass. So the sleeve gastric yeah. is a good procedure because we don't have any remnant stomach, so that we don't have to concern about uh, the gastric cancer Definitely. after surgery. Definite, sir. So it makes sense because Japan is a definite prone to malignancy, gastric malignancy, and for follow up, so you need we need the pouch and in remnant, so then there is no excess for follow up. So, sir, overall as a surgeon, so definite progressively, so we evaluate an evolution of our technique for better results. Any type of surgery. So if you see, especially also. in bariatric surgery progressively we learn from ourselves always mm -hmm. i so see watch my videos yes this this point this point so during this period now 15 16 years uh, you are performing a sleeve gastrectomy we are interested to know which points uh, uh, so you have changed it during this period for better results yeah so actually during this 15 years I have many failure. I ha I have that many mistakes. Actually, that I started strip gastric me in two thousand five. Uh, I learned it from Michel Garnier, and I copied his technique. And uh, the first time I did the strip gastric me was just uh, using uh, the bigger bougie, the forty five French bougie, like uh, he did in um, BBDDS. Yeah. Right, and that we make a bigger size of uh, stomach, strip, okay. yeah. And then at that time, I didn't use any uh, reinforcement. Yeah, yeah. First few cases, I just cut by stapler, uh, no reinforcement. But of course, I had a leakage. Yeah. Then I started to use some buttress material. Again, I have leakage. Oh my god! Yeah, so that actually I I I did uh, ruin my gastric bypass by hand suturing anastomosis technique, like I learned from Kirby Higa. So that I like to do hand suturing, so that I suture all the staple line from the top to the bottom. And yeah, after that, yeah. yeah, after that. Uh, I have very few uh, leakage from that staple line. So that what I'm doing for reinforcement is the suture or the staple line. And of course, in the first few years, I have some 
the rotation of the stomach after three gastrectomy. Then I try to pull the stomach and then touch to the, the, the to the gastropexy to avoid the rotating the stomach. And also I have a many case of intragastric, intrathoracic migration after sleep gastrectomy. Then I do a, a crural repair on the patient who have uh, had hernia. And then regarding uh, uh, stapler size, stapler size, I first use a blue stapler or green stapler at the first stapler. Yeah. But as you know, I had a leakage yeah. from the stapler. So that now I use the black stapler in the first stapler because the antrum of the stomach is a thicker than other part of the stomach. Yeah. So that first I use the black stapler and then I try to use a, a green or a purple stapler. That's my change of the technique of the three gas technique. Sir, as you mentioned, so definitely during this period, um, now about two decades, uh, you are practicing uh, bariatric surgery and also 16 years uh, a sleeve gastrectomy. Now the size of your bougie, because you mentioned that initially it was 45. Now what is the size of your bougie? 36. 36. And yeah. also with 36, what is my question? So when your size of bougie is 36, Still, you are embricating your uh, sleeve. Then you are a little wider than uh, uh, wider from your bougie, not tied to bougie. Yeah, that's you, you're right. So that I don't make it tight to the bougie. Yeah. Just to make yeah. some real space. Yeah. Between the bougie and the, the suture and the imbricate, yeah. then make it tight to the bougie after tight imbrication. Bougie. So regarding this uh, gastropexy, so with the left crust, this is your routine practice. And are you happy with this? You mean uh, the fixing this uh, sleeve to uh, uh, stitching the sleeve to left crust? No, it's not my routine, but it it should be done for the patient with a hiatus hernia. Ah, okay, okay, and also this chloroplasty in cases where you see so there is hyaluronia then you do chloroplasty, but it is not routine. Not routine. Uh, it's good. And so your distance from uh, pylorus, uh, how many centimeters your first stapler? Usually I use four centimeter from the pylorus. So uh, when you have standardized this technique, now how many years you have standardized this technique? Around uh, nine, Seven to nine years. Seven to nine years. So during this period, you think so your results are much better when you start, you decrease the size of bougie and also there is no stricture at incisora angularis and also you embricate the stapler line and in case of hiatal hernia, chloroplasty and also gastropexy with the left crust after standardizing this technique, there is there were less cases of leak and bleeding. Am I correct? Yes, you're correct. So that after the imbrication of the oral step line, I don't have any leakage. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Sir, um, sir we, are, we, are, we are interested to watch your any video. If you have any video, short video, please. You yes, can, okay, you I will share. show some. You have access, yeah. you can share. Interesting videos. Yeah, I will share my screen. Yes, yeah, sir, you can share. Just click share screen. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I can see, yes, we can watch. Yeah. This is a very special video which I use for the uh, sir, click virtual the reality the operating theater. Yeah. And, um, but this is just a, this one is just for the usual one. Can you see? It's yeah, moving? I can see, yeah. Okay, so 
I put uh, five trocar, including uh, liver tractor, and then check the stomach. Uh, we use a uh, sonic scission to dissect until the four centimeter from pyrrhic queen. Yeah. And then we're gonna stick. The important thing is for sleep gastrectomy is uh, complete dissection of the fornix, fundus of yeah. the stomach. Yeah. You need to dissect completely from this lesion. I mean, the, to see the EC junction. And I always dissect the fat part from the hiatus here. Okay. How routinely you dissect the fat part? Every time. Every time. It's okay. Every time. And then cut the fat part. Ah, you remove routinely. I remove the fat part to see the here. Okay, EG esophagus and the uh, junction of the stomach. Yeah, EG junction. Okay, sir. EG okay. junction, that's right. And I use a uh, stapler. The first one is a Brock stapler. And sir, now your bougie is inside duodenum. Yeah, uh, bougie is inside. Inside duodenum. Yeah. Cross the pylorus. Yes. So we need to check where is uh, uh, angularis here. And yeah. never get too close to the angularis in Cisura. This is a souvenir and uh, I always put the bougie inside when you I use a stapler and the second stapler with your right Second stapler will be with your right hand. That's right, from my right hand. Yeah. The important thing is, is adjust the, the angle of the stapler and need to see that the posterior wall. This two stapler is very important. And this is my fifth stapler. I usually use five or six stapler and uh, sir, routinely you use 45 millimeter or 60? No, no. It depends on the size of the stomach. Okay. Sir. I usually use a 60, but this is the last one. So that uh, I didn't use, uh, I didn't need to use uh, 60, yes. but yes. the 45 was enough at that time. Yes. So this time I use a six taper. And then the one of the most important things of the imbricate, I mean, the reinforcement is the imbricate this portion. Yeah, and this. And uh, so you're using ethi bond? I use the ethi bond. Okay, sir. Yeah. Then switch all the staple line from the top. To imbricate the top of the staple line here is very important because 80% of the leakage from the sleep just took me well from this point. Yeah. Sir, anytime, are you preferred to do omentopexy or no, only imbrication is sufficient? Only imbr imbrication is sufficient. Okay, sir. But uh, I think that, that this kind of precise the needle control is very important to this technique. Yes. So I always use a uh, tight strip to the stomach and uh, to use their imbrication 
and then adjust the size of the sleeve. Make it very tight to the buji. Of course, after this, the suturing, the breathing from a staple line is very rare. Yeah. Because I suture all the staple line. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent techniques. So I switch over the step line. Usually I use a two or three stitches to imbricate over the step line for reinforcement. Then I usually use endoscope during surgery. It's, of course, it's uh, not a leak test. We don't have any leakage after this, but we check there is no stenosis or no rotating yeah. in the stomach. Especially when I allow my fellows to do surgery, sometimes they make very tight too tight and uh, you know the, some stenosis especially in the incisura incisura that's right yeah. so at that time i have to remove the stitches so for sure i use the endoscope they're not too tight i mean not there's no stenosis and then i pull the stomach and uh, attach to the this um, part of momentum. Yes, gastropexy to here. Yeah, routinely you do this uh, because then there will be less chance of twist or functional obstruction. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So during uh, endoscope, I move the stomach and uh, where is the best position to attach? I usually put two or three stitches here. For the gastropexy. And then remove the, the specimen and the cross the, the biggest wound. That's why is my procedures. Sir, excellent, excellent demonstration. Yeah, excellent demonstration. And really it is, a, in my opinion, for especially for our young stars. So they can standardize, they can follow someone who is doing now about one decade, same technique and with excellent results. And if they follow this technique, then there will be less chance of any disaster I can ask because yep. definite leak is a disaster after surgery and how then management and then uh, unbelievable. So how much patient and doctor so face uh, such uh, issues, but if they follow proper technique, because uh, during this interview series, not only you, many others uh, who are well-known bariatric surgeon and expert in uh, also, especially sleep gastrectomy and did thousands of cases, same technique they are doing. So just like on uh, a little loose sleep, then embricate, and fix, and then there is no leak, no bleeding. Sleep is good surgery. Selection of this stapler is very important, definite progressively. So this technology improved if we compare, uh, so 20 years ago or 15 years ago, definite there were mm -hmm. some issues in stapler, but nowadays, yes, with the uh, passage of time. And we also understand how we use this uh, these staplers, definite it take time. Sir, it was excellent and sir, we also, I would like to know about your protocol of uh, pre-op and post-op uh, endoscopic follow-up. I you... see. Of course, uh, as you know, in Japan, we have uh, many gastric cancers and uh, many gastric pathologies. So that I put all my patients before surgery for endoscope. Yeah. And um, if there, there is some, uh, I mean, the uh, 
uh, atrophic gastritis, we all check uh, Helicobacter pylori. And then if there is a Helicobacter pylori, we eradicate all patients. Before and, surgery. Uh, before surgery, before surgery. And uh, of course, I, I don't think it's uh, necessary to all country, but it's necessary to our country. And also maybe in China and some part of, uh, maybe in Korea and some part of China. Yeah. Because uh, you know that the, from China, Korea and Japan occupied almost 6% of gastric cancer in the world. That's yeah. uh, quite a lot. So that uh, we have to be more careful than any other countries. Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. Sir, definitely, sir, uh, because now you are pioneer of bariatric surgery in Japan and with a lot of experience in your opinion. And also, as you have mentioned, so definitely due to such a situation uh, in Japan, so you can do only sleeve gastrectomy. And now 90% of your bariatric surgery belongs to a sleeve gastrectomy. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the relative and absolute contraindication of a sleeve gastrectomy? Um, I don't think there is an absolute contraindication, but uh, there is some relative contraindication, which has uh, the patient who is suffering from severe GERD, severe reflux. I think for such kind of patient, uh, Luema gastric bypass is the best procedures. And also, the, if patient has a very severe diabetes, the bypass procedure is more effective than sleeve gastrectomy. I think sleeve gastrectomy is a very nice procedure, and the probably, in my opinion, the seventy percent of the Japanese patient is suitable for sleeve gastrectomy, but other thirty percent need to have the other procedure like uh, Luema gastric bypass or sleeve DJB. Sir, you are doing routinely, so pre-op endoscopy. How many cases uh, you have, the clinical finding or endoscopic finding was uh, Barrett esophagus? Actually, in Asia, Barrett esophagus is not that many. Issue, yeah. Yeah, it's in comparison many. with the with the Western country. And also that uh, Barrett esophagus carcinoma is very, very rare in our country. Yeah. So that the barrett esophagus is the less than 10% in Japan in my practice. And also that the metaplasia of the barrett esophagus is very rare. Actually that I have them more than 10,000 cases or 20,000 cases of endoscopy by myself, not surgery. I can also do an endoscope, but uh, I've never had uh, any variety of metaplasia in my practice. So that in comparison with the Western country, variety of metaplasia is the very rare, still in Japan. So regarding but of course, yeah, yeah, please. Of course, we have to be concerned after three gastrectomy. There are many the reports of the variety of esophagus metaplasia after sleep gastrectomy. So that I routinely performed endoscope one year after uh, sleep gastrectomy for all patients. And if there is some the pathology, I mean the variety of esophagus or uh, GERD or something like that, I also tell them to check every year after surgery. Sir, what was the common finding, endoscopic finding after a sleeve gastrectomy, this endoscopic finding? Because now routinely you do all of your patient endoscope after one year. What was the most yep. common endoscopic finding after a sleeve gastrectomy? Most common endoscopic finding after sleeve gastrectomy is uh, hiatus hernia and the guard. Interesting. That is the Achilles here of the the sleeve gastrectomy. So, so sir, 
if we see so definite because this interview series the main target is this so we can take some points because just imagine i personally also i have faced many time when i do any type of bariatric surgery and after two years due to any other reason like due to for gallstone for lap coli when we do scope yes we that time we see a defect at uh, had us maybe when we are doing bariatric surgery there is some lipoma fat tissue we cannot identify and also it is not recommended to dissect that area and remove the fat and because also it is much difficult this is reality at that just image any morbid obese bmi 60 so how can you do that extra work at that place but routinely we we yes after surgery and up to 2 years yes we see that defect there is no lipoma no fat tissue and yes we see this defect and as you mentioned your most common finding endoscopic finding is hiatal hernia in these cases they are facing any issue or no only this was a finding and there was no gerd in in these cases of hiatal hernia what is your finding yeah Actually, that if there is no guard, that I leave leave my patient in the same position. But if there is a guard, I just prescribe some PPI. And usually, after three gastrectomy, most of our patient, the PPI works well. Yeah. Okay. And actually, I tell you the story. I used to do the crew repair during the three gastrectomy for all my patients, but After clear repair of all my patients, some patient developed a uh, hiatus hernia. I mean the the intrathoracic migration. Yeah, the three. So that I only select the patient to do a hiatus hernia repair during surgery, and uh, after that, probably the the reflux symptom is not that bad, but of course, maybe a thirty percent of a patient have. to have uh ppi after surgery not routinely but they have to have sometimes maybe uh, once or twice in a week that my patient have to take uh, ppi even i didn't dissect uh, any hiatus during surgery sir how long time you test ppi after surgery after sleep gastrectomy uh routinely i prescribe ppi for Three months after surgery, then I I talk to my patient to test to stop PPI, and to stop the PPI, and there is no symptom, we can stop the PPI. But even such kind of patient, when I do uh, endoscope one year after surgery, even the patient says there is no symptom of GERD, but they developed. severe guard like a guard c or b sir any time so, yeah sorry okay please so there is up some discrepancy during between the the symptom and the endoscopic finding. finding yeah yeah this was my question definite this was my question sometimes so patient is asymptomatic but when you do endoscope yes there are some findings and you can also see some as a phagitis uh, definite as you have mentioned you have faced such a situation in your patients yes i have a many patients such kind of patient that they said that the symptom is not that bad they can tolerate with that ppi but when i did a scope and the, the guard c which means the very severe esophagitis for such kind of patient i i told them to use ppi for a while at least a three months and so then just, yeah then next year or the six months later that i also do a, the scope again scope again yeah Sir, in these patients that are suffering GERD after a sleep gastrectomy, and uh, so why, why, what is my question regarding uh, so is effect or impact of H pylori? So patient who are definitely you have data, and if you have any comparative study, patients who are already positive with H pylori, 
you have eradicated H. pylori. Now, after surgery, the patient who is suffering with GERD after the sleep, so they are same patients, and also now their H. pylori is again positive or no? There is no relation between H. pylori and GERD, and there is no study till this time. Maybe in future, you can your fellows can evaluate this. These patients who are suffering now with the GERD after surgery, so maybe H. pylori is a dominant factor in these patients. Actually, I have no idea. I, I don't have any data regarding that. But as you said, there may be some relationship between H. pylori and the symptom of the guard after surgery. So th this is a very nice suggestion to for the research of yeah. my patient. Yeah, your fellows can follow, so then they can compare. So because you are routinely doing endoscopy, pre-op, post-op, and you have registered data of H. pylori positive before surgery, you eradicated already. Yep. After surgery, same GERD patient, you can check and also compare. Yes, this was the same patient who was suffering with H. pylori. So maybe, so then in future, so uh, we can think about such a case, then we can also uh, guidelines, any protocol for such a case who is suffering already with H. pylori, what we must do, how long time, these patients need to follow up, how long time they need a triple therapy or also as well as PPI. So maybe it will be helpful because what is, what is our theme in this series, really sleep gastrectomy is a good surgery and physiological and also we can save this surgery because as I see, just imagine a 20 years old, young. So we, if we do any type of, Personally, I am doing one anastomosis gastric bypass in my main practice. So just I imagine, so if he live 80 years, so 60 years, he will be with one anastomosis gastric bypass. And also then he will face such a situation. But a sleeve is again a physiological surgery. This is my personal opinion. Maybe mm -hmm. with, with the help of such a person like you, we can standardize. Yes, if you do this, you do this, then there is less chance of GERD after a sleeve gastrectomy. Yeah. Sir, another question regarding GERD. So, uh, because you are doing routinely uh, surgery in patients who are suffering with the TIL esophagitis BRC. So, anytime in these cases, the situation becomes worse and intractable GERD after surgery, and you have converted this surgery to Ruan Y. Yes. So, I have many patients if we need to convert it to Ruan Y gastric bypass after straight gastric me. The majority of the reason is their severe GERD and the severe reflex. So such patients complain of the, the vomiting during the sleep and the after sleep gastric me. Yeah. So usually the just a gut symptom like a heartburn can be minimized with a PPI. But the symptom like a ref severe reflex, you know that the, some uh, gastric juice comes to the mouth during the sleep. That is a very, sometimes very lethal situation. Yeah. So that for such kind of patient, we need to uh, combat it to the gastric bypass. Of course, there is no stenosis in the tube. Yes, sir, yeah. Sleepy, I think. No stenosis, but they have some symptom like that. So if they have a symptom like that, the, it ha if it happens during their sleep, it's caused very severe pneumonia or something like that. So that yes. I did a sleep gas, I mean, a Ruema gastric bypass, combated to Ruema gastric bypass. Sir, any time, are you think about links in such a patients or rape of falciform ligament? Are you think about this? Uh, you, you mean the links? Yeah. Of that link one? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not approved yet. But as I learned from my friends in the United States, yeah, links sometimes works, but sometimes happens very severe complication. So that if even if the links are approved in Japan, now I don't have a, my I don't have any idea to use links for such severe uh, 
reflex after sleep, basically. Anyway, and also that my friend in Taiwan is a ligament of terrorist. Yeah. So that, yeah, I'm in taxi. And the, that seems very interesting. Yeah. That is uh, that is much better for me than links. Maybe yeah. it, it works. Yeah, maybe. I have no one case. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> because why am why I am asking? So we must also think something about uh, such a procedures. Because now, yes, we know that's a routine. So we change to run by gastric bypass. Yeah. But also sometimes, like in the population, in Japanese population, then we need because when you will do uh, this. Uh, Ruan white definite the pouch is remaining there and you have no excess of that pouch that is sleeve till entrum. Uh, there are only two options. You can remove all that remaining yep. because uh, you must remove that because for future because there is chance of malignancy or we must go for some procedures like uh, this wrap of uh, falciform or terrace ligament and also other procedures like links or I have no idea and repair of that uh, Kurura and uh, I don't know, but uh, something we must uh, uh, think about this, uh, then maybe that will be effective. Yeah. So actually that uh, when I do a low my gastric bypass after sleep gastrectomy, if the patient used to have H. pylori positive, I reject all the laminate stomach okay. for the, the fear of the future malignancy. Yeah. Sir, in your, uh, uh, this is a general question in your uh, cases because you are also doing a ruin by gastric bypass. Any team, have you faced any uh, carcinoma in remnant? No. So then why well, this no. fear? Then why this fear? So if uh, there is no family history of gastric carcinoma and there is no risk factor, because a patient is afraid of gastric cancer after the Louis gastric bypass. Because in Japan, almost every patient has uh, relatives or friends yeah. who suffered from gastric cancer. I understand, yeah. Yeah, so that they have the fear of gastric cancer. Actually, from the, the scientific viewpoint, I know that the gastric cancer after laminate stomach after rheumatic gastric bypass at the laminate of stomach is very rare, very rare, I know. But we have some reports from Taiwan and China. So that if uh, such things happened in Japan, so there may be some, some conflict. So that to avoid such kind of conflict, uh, I'm, I usually avoid uh, usual gastric bypass. But instead of Lumi gastric bypass, I started sleep DJB. Sleep DJB is uh, with sleep gastric me and duodenal jejunal bypass. Jejunal bypass, yes. Yeah, that is the alternative of Lumi gastric bypass, yeah. and uh, the result regarding diabetes is excellent after the sleep DJB. So in Asia, some institutes like in Taiwan and China, Korea started sleep DJB and uh, their result is also excellent. Sudden low BMI, what is your opinion about SASI? SASI. SASI means, you mean the, not SADI. No, no, not Sadi, Sasi. That's a loop, Sassi. a loop with entrum, entroiliastomy, sleeve with entroiliastomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Sasi is one of the choice and uh, probably much easier than Strip DJB. Yeah. But I, I'm just a little bit skeptic about Sasi because there's a two loot. Yeah. So, I'm waiting for the result. And then it, from my opinion, it may cause some uh, ulcer at the anastomosis site. But uh, we are waiting for the long-term result of the SASI from my friends. 
Sir, in, uh, I did uh, some cases, obviously, DJP in 2013-14 about it, but it is much difficult when you do cut this D1 and also this, uh, the color of this duodenum become changed and cyanotic and when we attach the loop, really technically little difficult. Are you agree? Yeah, it may be a little bit difficult for, yeah, technically it may be a little bit difficult. Yeah, it was really, I fear. Sir, another question regarding sleep gastrectomy. So we must uh, go, uh, continue our sleep. Another issue and also our patient are facing is weight regain. So definite you are a scientist and you are following your patients. Which percentage of your patients are suffering with weight regain? So if you include the, the very little amount of weight regain, all patients, Yes. Or yeah, the maximum weight loss is around one to one and a half years. Then two years, three years, a little bit regain. Yeah. But uh, it is uh, acceptable. Yes. But sometimes the patient develops unacceptable weight regain, like a, a more than the 15 kilogram of weight regain, which is 20% um, uh, of a weight regain. And also that sometimes they developed uh, to the weight regain to the, the first point. I mean, the, yes. like a pre-surgery. Yeah. For such kind of patients, I have two options. One is uh, re-sleeve because uh, only this sleeve is covered by national insurance. But as you know, that the least sleeve gastrectomy is not that effective. Of course, it's better than nothing, but uh, not that effective in comparison with uh, bypass surgery. Anyway. Yeah, and I used to do a renal gastric bypass, but uh, renal gastric bypass is uh, not that good in comparison with uh, BPDDS or, I mean, the uh, sleeve DJB. So regarding uh, well again after sleep gastrectomy, the, I think in my practice, sleep DJB, the, which is like uh, uh, the BPDDS, is um, more effective than any other procedures. So in such a situation, when you're going to do sleep DJB, so you re-sleeve again your pouch or no, just you cut this D1 and attach this jejunum to duodenum, duodenum jejunal bypass. You mean that uh, it depends on the patient. If the, before surgery, we check the size of the stomach. If the size of the stomach dilated, I cut the stomach too, re-sleeve and DJB. If the size of the stomach is uh, almost similar with the first one, I mean the usual sleeve gastrectomy, I just add the bypass procedures. Sir, how many cases uh, you uh, did surgery after weight regain? What is your, and which type was most common? You mean the fish type of procedures? Yeah, yeah, for weight regain. I have three procedures, but most, the, the dominant procedure in my practice is a uh, strip DJB after strip gastrectomy. And what is now BP limb when, because this is not initial when after weight regain and redo. So this is real DJ or DI. This is didno jejunal bypass or no, this is didno ileal bypass. Still jejunal bypass. Still jejunal I, I always count the- Whole the, length. Whole length. And okay. then I bypassed the one side of the whole, the, Small intestine. In redo. That... in redo. Or redo, yeah. But in initial, if you are going to do initial D, this uh, sleeve uh, DJB, how much you are BP limb? Initial surgery. At, at the time, I, I started sleeve DJB in 2007. And uh, at first, it was uh, 100 centimeter of BP limb and 150 of the ruling. But now it changed my the procedures. 
Now I count the usually the BP limb is a uh, 200 centimeter and the elemental limb is a 100. This is usually my product and the primary procedures. No, sir, uh, this is a DJB. This is not loop. This is like row and white that you are doing. And for the very severe patient like a BMI 60, I do a loop. Okay. Loop is safer and easier. Yeah. But for the patient, like a low BMI patient, and if we're suffering from severe diabetes, I prefer to do a row and Y fashion. In definite, when you're doing row and Y, you know, DJB, uh, this is sleep, DJB, row and Y technique, always you close your defects? Yes, I always close all the defects. And what is the percentage of marginal ulcer when you are doing didonojejunostomy? There is chance of any ulcer or no? Less than Roux and Y or less than any type of anastomosis when small bowel directly attached to stomach? Actually, that uh, my BPDD, um, my strip DJB, I have no ulcer. In the, yeah, so the, in comparison with my Roux gastric bypass, my ulcer ratio is eight percent. Eight. It's a. Uh, it's uh, very frequent. But uh, after three DJB, I don't have uh, any ulcer. At the anastomosis, so yeah. one of the advantage of the three DJB is uh, less ulceration and the less stenosis. Compared to the Lewin Y gastric bypass, oh, this is also that. Uh, our friend Shike Huang reported the same kind of results in comparison with the Luema gastric bypass, strip DJB. He's doing a loop DJB, but the result of the stenosis and the ulceration is much less than Luema Y. So he also preferred to strip DJB. Sir, another question regarding, uh, so when you're doing it, uh, because this is little other than sleep, but very interesting. Uh, this uh, we will continue our series because next year we will be continue Ru and Y and from July 2022 till December we will talk about uh, low BMI sleep plus surgeries we will talk about mm -hmm. that and definitely yep. again I will uh, we need your support and CK about in those days and many others uh, sir my question regarding so if someone you did uh, sleep plus DJ sleep plus surgery any type like DJB you did surgery so now, uh, due to uh, patient need at this stage, uh, uh, access to duodenum for ERCP, there is uh, uh, also stone. So what you will do? Yeah, that's a problem after all kinds of bypass procedures. So that after bypass procedure, including Y and the stream no, no, DJB. Sir, just a minute. In Ruanwai, we have access from remnant. In Ruanwai, oh. mini, we have access. We can, we can put the more broker, but in uh, when you do this uh, DJB, just imagine you have stapled D1, how you will access? So actually that's a problem of the DJB. We cannot access the ERCP after yeah. the three DJB. Yeah. This is the issue because always I think about this because when you do, if you had some interim again, you can do because when we do routinely, Nowadays, so weight regain after a sleep gastrectomy and routinely we do change to one anastomosis gastric bypass and we cut entrum straight and do this gastro -shejanostomy. Again, we have entrum. So if someone need to, so this assisted, uh, uh, this uh, endoscopy, yes, we can put this trocar or this uh, scope uh, from entrum to duodenum. But just imagine when we staple D1, so then there is no way to access duodenum. Am I correct, sir? Are you agree? Yeah. But uh, the ratio of ERCP after surgery is not that much. Have you faced any conditions of patient? You did a sleeve DJB and now you need to access uh, this area. So then we definitely we need interventional radiologist or someone from TIPS or I don't know how we uh, Actually that uh, I have no patient, no patient who need the ERCP after surgery. Yeah. As yeah. far as I know. Maybe, so if, if, we, if we think uh, very uh, hard, so we can yes go 
laparoscopically and also we can do this maneuver and we can manipulate d2 and also doable but uh, very risky because when we will do that duodenotomy at that area there is chance of leakage and so again more complication and i have no idea a little difficult really how can mm. we handle such a situation yeah so the such a situation is very rare so yeah. if we meet such a situation we may access from uh, river yeah that uh, pt gpd yeah. or pt yeah PD or radiologist like yeah we can yeah uh, sir, sir uh, so this is also a, a question about ESG endoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. What is your opinion? ESG? Yeah, ESG. Uh, I also started ESG in my practice. And uh, to tell the truth, I will do my fourth ESG tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. So what is your and, criteria? Uh, what is your patient selection criteria? I recommend the ESG for the patient if it is the BMI less than 30. Less than so BMI less than 30 means uh, not an indication of surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my patient lose around 10 to 15 kilogram. That is enough for such kind of patient. But uh, if the patient BMI is over 30, I strongly recommend to have three gastrectomy. Three gastrectomy. Yeah. yeah. But if the patient yeah. is uh, not willing to have surgery, only such a patient have the candidate of ESG. Sir, your patients are happy? I'm sorry? You are now ESG patients. They are satisfied? Uh, not as good as straight gastrectomy. Yeah. But my patient, all of my patient for ESG is uh, not a candidate of surgery. BMI less than 30. So that uh, they lose 10 to 15 kilogram. So my patient is satisfied with the result. Sir, can we ask? From the point of surgeon. Yeah. I think ESG never replace three gastrectomy. Sir, are ESG, you is, a, ESG go ahead. is a good alternative of gastric balloon? Yeah, I think so. But one of the uh, good point of balloon is, is a very easily reverse and uh, temporary. Some patients want to have a temporary one and the easy one. Yeah. For such kind of patient, the balloon is a good procedure. But uh, if the patient want to have uh, proven long-term data, yeah. ESG is a better than balloon, but less than sleeve gastrectomy. Less than sleeve. Sir, really excellent, and this was uh, so practical. And uh, your you have your support uh, also, and your guidance. We need again because this our uh, uh, platform is global laparoscopy and uh, robotics. Uh, so this is a uh, international platform, especially for our youngsters. Sir, we also facilitate our youngsters for fellowship programs, uh, and we uh, have fellows from all over the world. They apply for fellowship program. Is it possible to? Uh, especially to facilitate uh, our fellows and for further fellowship programs in Japan under your supervision? Yes, we have already opened the, the international fellowship, the clinical fellowship program in Japan, in my institute. It's good. Surely that already 14 surgeons came to have such a clinical fellowship in Japan. Sir, which field? 14 which overseas field? Patients, international patients. International surgeons so into my hospital. Bariatric and also minimal invasive and endoscopic bariatric. Uh, yes. Okay. In so my definite, definite, I will stay in touch with you and we need the sure. detail, detail of this fellowship program because we have a lot of requests from all over the world. 
so people people uh, want to so they know they need some guidance and proper fellowship programs sir again so much thanks uh, for your uh, participation i know you are so much busy and the timing of japan also and uh, your uh, this participation really encourage us because a person like you when accept invitation it's great honor for us and definite this discussion and this session will be fruitful for our youngsters sir again so much thanks and definite in future and in, in, in other series uh, we need your support and guidance thank you it's really my pleasure to join this uh, so much thanks sir and so much thanks sir and my viewers so much thanks sir, because you are with us and we will continue our series and this sleeve gastrectomy safe sleeve gastrectomy series this was our last session so professor patrick noel started this session and uh, professor kazama finished this uh, safe sleeve gastrectomy have a nice uh, so this uh, uh, new year and also christmas uh, uh, and this vacations in january in mid january then again uh, we will start a series of ruan by gastric bypass that will be for 6 months every week every tuesday 10 pm dubai time we will be live and from then july 2022 then we will uh, go ahead with sleeve plus surgery metabolic surgery with low bmi and then in 2023 about redo surgeries we need uh, your uh, so uh, definite uh, your comments and also you you are viewers due to uh, so your support we are here and so we we are able to continue and now we have completed our one years this uh, uh, interview series again we need your support if you have any question from professor you can ask and comment and definite professor will answer professor again so much thanks and hope very soon see you any international conference yes see you thank then you, sir. thank dance. you sir have a nice time sir have a good night thank you sir